So angry people, you need to calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down? What I'd like you to do is apologize instead of being a bitch. Don't be a Karen. Hey creator, I'm Ian Corzine, your social media lawyer. I'm here to help you understand the law and protect your artistic freedom. Today we're talking about this new law, the Karen Act, that actually prohibits Karens in San Francisco. This legislation has been largely applauded and a lot of different communities wanna pass similar laws. And so this type of law, the Karen Act, may be coming to a community near you. So what is a Karen? Well, if you've been on a different planet for the last three weeks and haven't heard the term used, a Karen originally referred to what was thought to be an entitled white woman who was complaining about people of color. Now the term Karen is broadly construed and generally refers to any white person, male or female, who is complaining about anything or acting unreasonably like this. Stop it. No, Are you guys leaving? Get off my car. Get off her car. Get off of her car. Move on up, Krista. Krista, don't move up. Now the law that we're here to talk about today, the Karen Act, was introduced in San Francisco by Supervisor Shimon Walton. He saw evidence of a string of discriminatory calls to police and wasted resources for law enforcement and wanted to introduce a law that could change all that. His law is more specific. It doesn't just apply to white people. It doesn't just apply to unreasonable conduct. It applies to everybody. And basically it bars people from calling police utilizing law enforcement resources based upon a discriminatory complaint. The Karen Act is not just named after the slang term Karens, it's actually an acronym that stands for Caution Against Racially Exploitive Non-Emergencies. That's the formal name for the law and it's called, for short, the Karen Act. And basically the law makes it a crime for anyone to call law enforcement and make a complaint that's based upon some sort of discriminatory category like race, ethnicity, religion, gender, all that is barred and this law prohibits people from doing that. It really seeks to stop people from calling the cops based upon racially biased motives. There is a lot of debate about whether or not the Karen Act is even necessary. In California, there are a couple of laws that really fulfill the main purpose of the Karen Law. The first one is there is a prohibition on false police reports. You can't call the cops, make up facts, and have them go to a scene or do some action, you know, expend police resources and have it not be a true complaint. Secondarily, there's a law against obstruction of justice. If you prevent law enforcement for doing their job with false facts, with getting in their way, whatever, then you are guilty of a crime. So if someone called the police in California, specifically San Francisco, and made a complaint that really was racially biased, then that would probably fall within the dictates of a false police report or obstruction of justice. Basically, there was no crime that was reported and the police resources that were dedicated to this complaint were a waste of time and that's obstructing justice. Additionally, if you're making up facts to justify why the police need to come out or you're coming up with some bad reason for their appearance, you know, a racially based reason, then that would be a violation of the law against false police reports. There also are a lot of debates about the viability and effectiveness of the Karen Act. The first thing is who would enforce it? Who would make the decision about whether or not a complaint to police was racially or discriminatorily made? Who makes that call? Would it be the law enforcement officer? Would it be a judge, a jury? Those questions are open and have not been decided. Additionally, there's questions about what would be the penalties for violation of the Karen Act? Would it be a fine, community service, jail time? How much jail time? There are a lot of questions that surround how the law would be effective, how it would be viable, how it would work in modern day society. And some legislators are saying, you know, if we pass this law and it becomes universal, will it discourage people from reporting crimes or other dangerous conduct? You could think about this. What if you were a white person and you saw, you know, two people of color potentially committing a crime or doing something dangerous, you know, lighting fireworks off in the street where they're not allowed, it might prevent that white person from making a call for fear that if it could be construed that the call was not valid, 
It was made on a discriminatory basis, and therefore, this white person would be in violation of the Karen Act. So a lot of legislators are saying, we don't need to have this law because it's actually going to reduce crime fighting. It's going to make people think twice before they report criminal conduct for fear that they'll be in violation of this law and maybe end up in jail. A lot of legislators are also talking about a companion law that would carry with it civil penalties for violation of the Karen Act. Actually, in the California legislature right now, there is a bill that's been introduced that would provide that if you are the person, you're the victim of a racially motivated complaint to law enforcement, you can recover up to $10,000 in damages. There's a lot of talk from legislatures that they also want to introduce an attorney's fee clause. So the victim of a discriminatorily made complaint could also recover his or her attorney's fees based upon that complaint. So what do you think about the Karen Act? I'll tell you what I think. I think the law is largely symbolic. I think there's a lot of other laws in California and throughout the country that prohibit the same type of conduct that the Karen Act prohibits. So the law is largely unnecessary. I also think it's unworkable. I don't know who's gonna make the decision about whether or not a given complaint to police is discriminatory in nature, racially based in nature. Who's gonna make that decision and who's to say that person is right and, that, and another person is wrong? The person who made the complaint is wrong and the person who's the victim is right. It's gonna be really, really difficult because a lot of times these complaints are gonna be a he said, she said situation. You know, their complainer is going to say something about what his complaint was about or her complaint was about. And then the victim is going to say what they thought. And it's going to have a subjective kind of analysis attached to it. It's going to be hard to be objective in a lot of these cases. Also, some of these calls won't be recorded. They'll be made on the street. And there maybe there won't be a phone that will record the conversation. So it's hard to get, get to get evidence to show that a given call was racially motivated. So for those reasons, I think the Karen Act is probably either not gonna pass or it's gonna be hard to enforce. But as always, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about the Karen Act? Is it necessary? Is it workable? Could you describe for me a structure for the analysis of whether or not a given call to law enforcement is discriminatory in nature? I wanna hear from you, so put your comments below and don't be a Karen. And while you're not being a Karen, I also want you to not be uninformed. Listen, creator, a wave of social media censorship is coming for us all. How do you survive? How do you protect your free speech rights? Well, you watch the video right here. And as always, as you watch, I'll be at iancorzine.com to answer any of your social media law questions.